Hi, welcome back to Books on the Go. I'm Anna and I'm here with a tag today. It's the Booktube at the Gym tag and I was tagged by Sean Mooney of Sean the Book Maniac and you must check out his video which I'll link below uh, with lots of gym action. It's really good and I enjoyed it very much so I had to do the tag. Uh, it's quite a long one, so you might want to pause and make a cup of tea. I have a peppermint tea, um, so I'll just get straight into the books. So the first prompt is Bench Press. So this is all about showing off, and it's the question is, what book are you proud of having read? So I chose for this one Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace which I'm, I absolutely loved and I did it, which I think was the reason I, well, which helped me enjoy it even more, was I did it as part of a buddy read on Litzy. And so the, I've forgotten who it was, but the wonderful organizers did really good prompts each week and some funny sort of photo prompts and other discussion questions, which people, it was, it's one of those books that you do need to sort of debrief on from time to time. So it really suited the buddy read idea and I really loved it. This really worked for me, but I totally get that it wouldn't work for everyone. And indeed, I was quite daunted for a few years before I did read it. But I mean, I have to say it's over a thousand pages long. It does have lots of footnotes or end notes because they're placed at the end. That, you, that really enhance the reading experience and the enjoyment of it, but you do have to go and read, and it's, you know, in my copy anyway, it's very small print, uh, and some, at some parts of it are conceptually quite highbrow. There's some maths infinity questions, and there's a game that he makes up called Echelon, or S, I've forgotten the name of it, and um, parts of it are absolutely a breeze and very funny and other parts do get more complex. So all in all, I am proud of having read it just because of, I think it is an achievement, but uh, yeah, I totally can understand why some people wouldn't persevere, but it just suited my sort of sensibility and sense of humour, even though I know David Foster Wallace is problematic. But moving on, so, uh, Number two, leg day. So this is a prompt where lots of people skip leg day. What is a book or genre or author that you have skipped because you don't think you can handle it or that you wish you'd skipped? So I don't know about not being able to handle it, but a, um, a leg day, I guess that I'm quite happy to skip because I don't think I'll love it, is Moby Dick by Herman Melville. So I won't say too much more. I know that it's a book a lot of, well, I know that it's a classic and it's a book that a lot of people consider required reading and certainly, I guess, in America or North America, most students read or lots of people have, have read, but I just haven't been enticed. I've heard that it's, there's a lot about whaling. I've heard that, that, you know, now reading back on it from our perspective today, it's uh, it has attitudes and things that we may not agree with and that's fine, but um, just it, I haven't been sold on it and given that it is fairly long, sort of 680 pages in this edition, I feel like I don't need to, to do that. So I'm skipping Moby Dick. Uh, I'm happy to be persuaded otherwise, but at this stage it's not it's not going to happen. Uh, number three, crunches. We all know crunches are good for you. And what's a book that you've read because you needed to gain a better understanding of literature, your work or history or something like that? So there are so many that fall into this category, but generally I would say non-fiction that, you know, that's when I go to non-fiction is when I need to understand something that as with so many things I just didn't learn about at school and then you feel like you're missing a bit of knowledge 
that um, you, you sort of need. So lots of history. Uh, some authors that I go to are Simon Sebag Montefiore, who's written some wonderful books about Russia. So the Romanovs and a book about Stalin, or the young Stalin, I think it was, that I read recently. And Masha Gessen, who writes, who's a journalist and author who writes about Russia today, and she's written about Putin in The Man Without a Face and other other books more recently. Um, and in my TBR under this category, in terms of things I feel like I need to know more about, one is SPQR, A History of Ancient Rome by Mary Beard. And I'm really keen to read this and I'm just, I think, waiting for the right time, which I don't know, something will make me pick it up. If I go to Rome, I'll definitely pick it up. Um, so let's hope that happens soon. And another one which just looks so long, but I'm fascinated to read it, is Leonardo da Vinci by Walter Isaacson. So I'd love to know if anybody has read this or The Merry Beard, um, what you thought and if I should pick it up and how to tackle it. Because it is, not that I'm, I don't mind a long book, but um, it just makes me feel like it'll be a slog, even though I'm, I'm sure that it won't be. So that's Crunches. And number four is the treadmill. So it's all about endurance. What's a difficult or long book that you've powered through? One that, uh, a bit like Infinite Jest, was really long, but I did get through it and, then, and I enjoyed it, was War and Peace. That was an endurance situation. It, did, it took a while and it was quite heavy, heavier going in style than say Infinite Jest, just because it's a, it's a very slow and steady pace and just the Tolstoy's style is a bit more serious. And so um, it did feel like an endurance feat, but I really, really liked it. I was so glad I read it and I, I recommend that one, but it, it is sort of settle in for the long haul with that. Um, and I don't have it on me, but I'm sure that's familiar to most of you. So number five, Lat Rose, all about feeling good about yourself. So what's a book or author or genre that brings you joy? This is very easy for me. It's PG Woodhouse and this is, this one's something fresh, but anything with Jeeves and Wooster and there's Blandings. I've forgotten the, some of the names of some of them, but anything by Woodhouse brings me joy and it's a treat that I, that always picks, picks me up and puts me in a good mood. And yes, I know it's very old fashioned and so on and so forth, but I am in awe of his wit and his way with language and ability to make me laugh. So I always go to Woodhouse. Um, I don't, I was just looking on my shelves. I don't actually own many of his books, but over the years I've read quite a few and, um, I still have more to read, which is fun to have in store. And number six is Squats. Weights can get you down. What's a book that was depressing but you pushed through? And this was, for me, No Friend But The Mountains by Beruz Buchani. And I say depressing not because of the style of the writing or anything like that, but simply the... Uh, subject matter, which is Beruz Buchani, um, and I should have said it's translated by, I think it's Omid Tofegian. Yes, Omid Tofegian. Um, Beruz Buchani is a Kurdish journalist who's been held at Manus Island. Uh, he was seeking asylum in Australia, and the government has, um, has the policy of detaining asylum seekers offshore at Manus Island. I think the particular prison he was at has closed down, but he's still there and in limbo effectively um, and has endured a very, very traumatic time and shocking experiences in that prison at the hands of our government. And this, for me, was very depressing reading and, sh you know, shocking and shameful and yet it's really important and I'm glad that I've read it and I think it's a must read. So it, I think, falls into that category of a depressing book but it is something 
you know that you you have to push through so that's no friend but the mountains and we're doing that Amanda and I are going to be talking about that shortly on the podcast so stay tuned if you want more of a discussion about this important book and the next prompt is bicep curls so it's easy to overdo these I'm not quite sure what that means I don't tend to overdo exercise I, I tend to stop before there's any chance of overdoing it but it's easy to overdo bicep curls apparently so name two authors you've read too much so this is a really interesting question I don't again maybe in this in the same way that I exercise I probably don't tend to overdo things with my reading and but I like it really made me think this question so one answer that I came up with was Agatha Christie and not that I've read too much but these are the Miss Marple stories and this is a beautiful folio edition and what I find with these and I guess with her novels as well is if you read too many in a row you start to guess the you know what's happening or you start to be able to solve the mystery a bit more and it spoils it a little bit so I find with these and I think it, they made this comment in the forward I think it was Stella Duffy who wrote the introduction to this edition and I from memory I think she makes the same comment that you can't read them all at once and it sort of spoils it the the mystery of it and you start guessing um, because you get used to the way she works I suppose so this is Agatha Christie I would never say I've read too much of her but it's in moderation I can only read sort of one book or one story at a time and another author in terms of getting tired out of authors not quite but again maybe if I read too much at once is Haruki Murakami in a slightly different way I've started to notice a just some of his sexist attitudes or just not portraying women as strongly as he could and I noticed it particularly with this book Men Without Women which is a collection of short stories and then I read his most recent book which the name has gone out of my completely gone out of my head Killing Commendatory I think it was and I really enjoyed that actually and what I think what was nice was I'd had a break and then I'd come back to it thinking, oh dear, I'm, one, I'm worried that I've outgrown Murakami and then just came back into his world and really enjoyed it. Did find it problematic as far as the women characters and the attitudes towards the women went, but I was able to enjoy his writing and the way he creates these worlds and his sort of lovely rhythm of his writing. Um, so I think he's one and because he writes each book is quite similar in terms of there'll be a well There'll be a single man who's cooking pasta. There'll be a cat. There'll be a psychedelic, you know supernatural element um, I think because he tends to Repeat himself in terms of the motifs and the style um, If you read them all at once you would find it a bit much I would say so um, that's the bicep curls the next prompt number eight is tricep dips so this is the final prompt really it's triceps are often ignored so three authors that you need to read more so I don't know if I couldn't really say three authors that I've ignored that I need to read more because um, I've either heard of them and want to read them and they're sort of on my stack or if I have read them I'd like to read them more but I wouldn't say you know I need to but in general as a general I guess category I would say more indigenous Australian authors just because living in Australia I'd like to be I'd like to think that I'm reading um, you know a wide spectrum of Australian authors and I think indigenous Australian authors do get forgotten or um, not yeah not spoken about enough and we probably don't read enough just in terms of for white Australians educating ourselves about that perspective and that experience so that is something I'm conscious of and I have got two books on my TBR at the moment one is Dark Emu by Bruce Pascoe which is about Australian Aboriginal history 
and the it's reconsidering the hunter gatherer label for aboriginal australians this i i've heard about it in a you know from different sources but there was one interview that kate blanchett did with mariella froster if i think it was on a good book or a good read or one of those bbc maybe it was open book um one of those podcasts and she recommended it and with her inimitable voice she said it's incredible or something like that it was just it just really sold it to me so um, I was planning to read it anyway but um, I'm moving that up in my TBR stack and another one that sort of goes with it and has just won an award at the New South Wales Premier's Literary Awards and I think has won other awards as well, has been really raved about, is Deep Time Dreaming by Billy Griffiths. And this is uncovering ancient Australia. So this is more archeological, but going into, again, Aboriginal Australian history. Um, and yeah, it's archeological digs, and it's the reassertion of Aboriginal identity and the uncovering of ancient Australia. So it's, had lots of good reviews and I'm very keen to do that and I think we're doing that on the podcast soon as well. So I've got some really interesting books coming up. Um, the last prompt is number nine, tag some people to share their workout routines. Um, so I, well I'm happy to tag any booktubers who either love going to the gym or even if you don't love going to the gym but prefer reading and um, would like to do the tag because I think it's a really interesting one and fun to do so go for it um, and that's it from me I hope you're having a good day and I'll see you soon bye for now